tonight i would like to discuss a very simple subject i think it is useful for all of us and easy to remember also this particular simple discourse of the buddha is called tamo tam parayana sutra there are only four lines it is in anguttara nikaya sutra pitaka chapter 4 tamo tam parayana tamo jyoti parayana jyoti tam parayana jyoti jyoti parayana four lines two words tam and jyoti what is tam tam or tamas tamas in sanskrit pali tam tam means darkness jyoti is a chinese word also isn't it jyoti what does it mean jyoti there must be a meaning we have few members also they are named jyoti you don't know the meaning jyoti in the pali language brightness so only two words here darkness and brightness so the name of the sutra is tamo tamo parai the darkness to darkness so the whole mankind we can divide into four groups all over the world one group goes from darkness to darkness another group from darkness to brightness another group from brightness to darkness and the other group from brightness to brightness easy to remember isn't it now can you repeat first group darkness to darkness second group brightness third one darkness last one brightness now what does it mean meaning is very simple darkness to darkness all those who are leading very miserable unfortunate unsatisfied life by facing so many problems and worries and difficulties sicknesses and shortcomings uh, these groups are in the dark they are leading a very unfortunate life there is no brightness in their life almost every day they are grumbling and worrying and crying and lamenting and accusing complaining no happiness because they have problems then we must find out why they had to lead such a miserable life while others are enjoying people have not realized the real answer for this question they have their own way of interpretation well some people say what to do god has created us to suffer then why does he create some others to enjoy is there any reason for that therefore we cannot accept this one group to enjoy and another group to suffer some others believe due to bad luck but they do not know the meaning of bad luck who create this so when it, they cannot understand that who create this bad luck uh, then they refer to t- 
charm or black magic, a devil, ghost. Now you are scared of your hungry ghost. You believe that bad luck come to you if you do not offer something to them. That is your belief. But there are many others who never offer anything to them, but they are okay. These hungry ghosts never go and disturb them. They always come and disturb who offer, because next year they will come and disturb more. The more you give, the more they come and disturb you. They do not know the reason why. That is why it is necessary for us to learn and to think Kamma vipaka vattanti vipako kamma sambhav tasma punabhav hoti evang loko pavattu. Now this is the saying of the Buddha in Sangyutta Nikaya, also Sutra Pita. Kamma vipaka vattanti karma creates vipaka. What is karma? Wholesome, unwholesome. In simple language, good and bad. Good and bad action create vipaka. What is vipaka? Effect. Good result, good effect, or bad. Kamma vipaka vatta. It is natural. There is no religion for this. So this karma is not belong to Buddhists or Hindus or few others. It is a natural or a common occurrence happening to every human being, some other living beings also. Otherwise no one can live. So every minute we create either good karma or bad karma. Otherwise we cannot live. There are three channels that generate this karma. Mental, verbal, physical. Our thoughts that we create in our mind also create karma, good karma and bad karma. We cannot stop thinking. After thinking, we talk something. Through these words, in four ways, we create either good karma or bad karma. We cannot keep quiet without talk. Then, when such thoughts appear in our mind, we cannot keep quiet. The mental energy, mental vibration, the volition persuade our physical body to do something. So by using our physical body, we create either good karma or bad karma. Now these are the three channels, kamma vipaka vattam. Whether we have a religion or not, whether we believe this or not, every human being is doing this. Otherwise, no one can survive. Vipako kamma sambhava. The effect that we have created through our own karma. Again, encourage or influence us to create either good karma or bad karma. Our own karma, which created some effect, these effects again influence us to create fresh karma. So there is no end. That is why it goes back. Wheel. How come? Assume someone is being born in a very, very miserable family, poor family, who suffer. 
because of his bad karma. Now that is the effect. And this suffering creates unhappiness, intolerance, jealousy, anger, greed, so many evil forces in the mind because of the bad effect of the karma. And these evil forces again influence us or that person to create more and more bad karma. Now, now you can understand how our own karma which produce an effect and that effect again influence us to commit more evil, more bad karma. Now let us take the other thing. Another person is being born in a very uh, well-to-do family, very cultured, religious-minded, very understanding because of his own good karma. Then, because of his understanding, sympathy, he tried to share his happiness, his property, his income, his pleasure with others. Then, he help others, he release others' suffering, others' shortcoming, others' problems. Then, by doing that, he create more and more fresh good karma. Now he used the good effect of his karma to generate more good karma. Now this is the nature of existence. Kamma vipaka vattanti vipako kamma sambhava vipaka, the effect, karma, again condition the karma. Tasma punabhava hoti, therefore, punabhava, becoming again and again and again, take place because of these karmic forces. Evang loko pavattanti, the world exists because of this. Otherwise, no world. Karma is responsible for existence, not only life, everything. Mind is responsible for everything, mental energy. When you analyze, you can understand. So, when we come to know that we are leading very unfortunate life, when you compare with others who enjoy their life. This is a good lesson for us. You have heard the sayings of the Buddha, we are the result of what we were. That means this indicates, the sufferings and problems indicate what we have committed, we have done during our previous birth. So definitely we have done something wrong. By knowing this, we must try to train ourselves not to repeat. Although we suffer today, not to continue this suffering. After that, we can maintain some sort of containment. We can reduce our jealousy and anger and hatred. When we realize that I am suffering because of my own bad karma, so others are not responsible for my own suffering. This also the Buddha has mentioned, seen Dhammapada. Even your father and mother cannot create karma for you. Your children cannot create karma for you. Your husband cannot create karma for wife, individual. I am not talking about the transference of merit, that is a different aspect. So we create our own karma according to our way of thinking. Wife cannot think for husband, husband cannot think for wife. They have their own way of thinking. Their anger, their hatred, their kindness, their compassion, their generosity, their understanding are individual. Uh, that is how individually we create our own karma. Just like hunger or sickness. The other person cannot share. 
by knowing this, without allowing to continue this suffering in the next life, we must try to change, adjust our way of life. Otherwise, we go from darkness to darkness. After suffering here, again harboring anger, jealousy, grudge and ill will and all the evil forces and committing evil forces, evil deeds, again another existence takes place to suffer more. This time or with, within this lifetime, this person is a human being. In the next birth there is no guarantee whether that person can become a human being again and then there will be more suffering. Now that is the meaning of these sayings of the Buddha. Many people go from darkness to darkness due to their ignorance. So if we suffer, if we have problems and difficulties without hating others, without disturbing others, without committing more and more evil deeds. There are many things we have to tolerate, many things we have to understand. Then we can reduce the tensions and jealousy. After that, our next birth also cannot become a miserable one. If it, if it is not a pleasurable one, but cannot become very miserable. Our first line. If we neglect this, our life goes from darkness to darkness again. Next one, darkness to brightness. Just now I explained already. By knowing that we are facing all these problems and difficulties, but not everything, remember. Another warning given by the Buddha, not to think all our unpleasant or pleasant experience are due to our previous karma, not all. We are experiencing lot of pleasant and unpleasant feeling due to various other reasons and factors. So when we neglect our duties and responsibilities, we have to suffer. Our previous karma has nothing to do with it. When we waste our income, whatever we have, we have to suffer. Our previous karma has nothing to do with this. If we act foolishly, without thinking properly, we get into trouble. Nothing to do with previous, previous karma. If we associate with bad companion, when they influence us to commit evil and bad things like drug addicts and what you call drunkards, and gangsters, nothing to do with previous time, present. So we must know how to adjust our way of life by using our human mind. Then the life cannot become miserable. So don't blame to our karma alone. Again, certain karmas that we have uh, created or generated within this lifetime also we experience the good and bad effect. You have already learned certain karmas, good and bad, can create the effect only within this lifetime while we are living here. After that, no. Certain karmas. And certain karmas create the effect not within this life, but hereafter, immediately after our death, when the next life comes into existence, the effects can be seen there, only in that particular life. If not, if certain other karmas obstruct the functioning of such karmas, these karmas also evaporate, disappear, no effect. These karmas are known as ahosi, ahosi karma. Ahosi karma means the karma which cannot create effect, you operate. That means all our good and bad karmas cannot create effect. 
certain other karma obstra, good one or bad one, then they disappear. In another group, the effect or the karmic result of our action follow us, just like our shadow. Life after life, there is no end, there is no limit unless we experience the good and bad effect. If not, until we attain sainthood, arahanta or Buddha, even after attaining arahantahood or the Buddhahood also, within that lifetime certain karmic effects they have to experience, good and bad both. Only after they are dead, after attaining Nibbāna, they will be free from their karmic effects. Uh, see the nature of karma. So, we have to handle this life very carefully by knowing how the life exists, function, and how life process proceeds, and how changes take place, how life can become miserable or very fortunate then who is responsible for that? External forces, a God, a angels, devils, the Buddha, have nothing to do. The Buddha can guide us, can advise us how to handle our life without abusing and misusing. So if we are not ready to listen to them, if we are lazy and crazy to abuse this human life, the Buddhas cannot do anything for us. The God cannot do anything for us. We have a wonderful mind, human mind, but this mind is completely polluted, cannot use properly. So when you learn, when you think, when understanding appears, then you come to know how to adjust your way of life. So, from darkness to brightness, by knowing our weaknesses, what we have committed, then try to mold our next life. By knowing that we have created some bad karma, then we try to create more and more good karma. We try to reduce evil forces from our mind, try to reduce our anger, reduce our jealousy, reduce our intolerance, reduce our hatred, reduce our selfishness. Then do some meritorious deeds. Now you are molding your next life. After that, next life cannot become miserable. So you never go from darkness to darkness again. So from here you go from darkness to brightness. Life becomes fortunate. So here, although we have committed certain evil deeds or bad karma, but still it is not too late for us to adjust our way of life to overcome and to find out a solution how to promote, how to develop our way of life, but it depends on our effort. But usual method or the belief that people maintain when we pray and worship or do some offerings to God, we can get rid of the bad effects. This belief was rejected by the Buddha. So that is not the Buddhist idea. You can worship, no harm. You can pray, very good. It is a meditation. The time that you spend for worshiping and praying, we can regard as meditation. No one can say it is bad.
but it is impossible for you to get rid of the bad effect, the bad deeds that you have done. The method introduced by the Buddha is by knowing that you have done certain bad deeds from that day onward, try to do more and more good deeds, reduce bad deeds, try to train your mind. Now, which is more effective? Which is more reasonable and meaningful? Think for a while. Now, then the next one. Jyoti Tamaparai, brightness to darkness. I think many people <laughs> are going from brightness to darkness. So what happens? When they gain their things and requisites very easily, especially in a very, very rich family, those who got a big property from their parents, they spent lavishly, they waste their property and they misuse. And they can use their property or money or income to commit any kind of immoral or wicked or dangerous thing because they have money. So they are not scared. They think we got money. Why worry? Bribery, corruption, they practice. Do not know. They are going from brightness to dark. They have no future. They have not accumulated enough good merit. They have not trained their human mind properly. They abuse, misuse, if not some other, by adapting very cunning and crooked, selfish method, gain a lot of property, bluffing and swindling others, or harming and disturbing others, become very rich, enjoy their life. After enjoying within that lifetime, what will happen to them? They have not done enough good karma, not accumulated enough good karma to have a better rebirth, better life, to continue their life in, in reasonable or pleasurable way. So they go from darkness, from brightness to darkness. The net life become very miserable. There were many Buddhist stories the Buddha has pointed out. Certain beggars and certain people who suffer pointed out. Do you know this person? During his previous birth, he was enjoying his life by swindling, bluffing, cheating, disturbing others. He was a very rich man, millionaire, multi-millionaire. After his death, and we can see how rebirth has taken place. How he suffered today because of his bad karma. How, how he abused his property, you can understand. Uh, they are the people who go from brightness to darkness. So although you have more than enough things, don't misuse, don't abuse. Try to make use of your knowledge, your understanding, your property, your energy to do some service to others, to release others' suffering, help others to get rid of their problems and difficulties. Then, although you are enjoying this life within this period, the next one never become miserable if you maintain this understanding. You have to think, how I got so much while others are suffering even without food? In fact, I did not work very hard to gain so much property. My income is very good, but many others working like slaves day and night, even then, they cannot find out three meals a day. They have no shelter for them to sleep. They have no clothing to wear. They have no medicine to take when they are sick. 
they have no money to educate their children they to work why do i gain all these things very easily even without working i gain more than in then they have to think these are the effects good result of the good karma that i have done during my previous birth so today i am experiencing i am gaining what i have given what i have done to others so i must be wise do you know the life story previous birth story of the buddha during the king vishantar he was a ruler the king he had seen how his father grandfather grand grandfather the previous king have collected so much valuable treasure gold and silver and valuable stones and everything full store rooms then he started to think they have collected they were dead and gone but they have not taken any i must be wise i must take away all these things when i die see so what did he do he invite all the beggars and poor people in the whole kingdom invited the palace then started to distribute uh, this is the way how he decided to carry with him distributed among the poor people. Uh, this is the way how he practiced dana charity uh, what do you call uh, generosity to reduce his selfishness to support others so the giver is the one who gains but not the receiver receiver won't gain anything after that but the giver the donor gets it depends what he needs whether he need in return the same property or whether he need knowledge or wisdom whether he need more energy and, and uh, something else it is up to him so we can gain anything whatever we like whatever we want danam kalu sabhavena sagg manus bodha naturally when we donate something for the benefit of others we get many things in return whether we aspire or whether we pray for that or not it is natural but the buddha's advice is be wise don't lower the real validity of your meritorious deeds by creating aspiration that you want to gain more and more wealth than property and worldly thing what will happen after spending or experiencing what you gain within that lifetime everything will be over no more nothing for you to carry for if you gain more knowledge and wisdom and understanding and courage you can cultivate your knowledge and wisdom and energy then you can carry life after life you can maintain your knowledge and your wisdom and your energy until you reach your final goal now see the difference now. so don't be crazy for worldly thing material thing by giving dana and offering this and that you must gain more valuable thing not worldly material thing now then brightness to darkness while enjoying and never realize that they gain more than enough things for them to enjoy their life due to the good karma that they have accumulated if they have neglected their way of life within that lifetime again can collapse from there because 
the karma that he has accumulated, worldly karma, are not strong enough to continue life after life, to provide the requisite life after life. Every time they have to do this, ah, this is the danger, this is the uncertainty. Assume during your previous birth you have done a lot of good meritorious deeds. Now you are experiencing, certainly you are experiencing. When you compare your way of life with others, you can understand. You are not starving, you gain enough food, you have a house, you have clothing, you have medicine, and all your senses are working, you are not mad, you are not crippled, you are not blind. So how fortunate you are. That means you have done some good work. But this is not enough. Again, within this lifetime, you have to accumulate some more and more for the next. If you neglect this, simply enjoy your life, what you gain through the influence of your previous karma. Nobody knows what will happen to your next life. There is no guarantee. Another thing, uncertainty of our mind, very uncertain. Today you are very kind, very honest, religious minded, reduce your selfishness, but circumstances, temptation, irritation, any moment can change your mind. There is no guarantee that you never change your mind. Very cultured or religious minded, well educated person can become very cruel, very selfish, very dangerous man. Uncertainty of the mind. That is why the Buddha always advises us don't prolong here within this cycle of birth. Because life is uncertain, mind is uncertain. Others can influence you, although you are good. Others can mislead you, although you are good. Then again life gets into trouble. You have to handle this very, very carefully. But how long can you maintain? Collapse, again get up. Work and work and work and get up. You become human beings again. After leading one or two lives, again you collapse. How long will it take for you to get up again? Uh, this is what we are doing, life after life. People never think seriously the uncertainty of our life. Now then the next one, Jyoti Jyoti Parai, last item. Those who go from brightness to brightness, they are enjoying their life, they are leading very pleasant, peaceful life, they gain everything what they need. While enjoying, they also cultivate their way of life, their knowledge and understanding, and meritorious deeds for the next life. So without abusing and misusing this life, they maintain this life very gently, lead a righteous way of life without disturbing others. At the same time they also earn something without hurting others. We can use our income in no harm. Again, we can use our income to support others. So we have completed our life without abusing. We enjoy our life in normal way. As I mentioned earlier, you can have worldly pleasure without violating your basic principle religious principle. You can entertain your senses. No harm. You never break any precept by doing that. 
But if you remain only enjoy by neglecting the other side, then life can become miserable again. So you can continue this brightness, brightness to brightness, make life also become very fortunate, very meaningful, very peaceful. If you handle this very carefully, uh, this is the simple discourse the Buddha has given for all of us to think very seriously, very, very meaningful, easy to understand and not difficult to practice within our capacity. Again I repeat, all over the world the human beings are categorized or classified into four groups. One group from darkness to darkness, you know the meaning. Another group from darkness to brightness. Another group from brightness to darkness. Another one, brightness to brightness in very few ideas, not even five percent. <laughs>